Hey, how you doing? Today we have yet another video in my Habits of series. Been a little while since I did one of these, but guess what? I'm back. And who better to return with than one of the most requested guitar players for this series, Mr. Mark Knopfler. Now, with Mark Knopfler, he is not necessarily one of my primary influences. I had to go back and listen to a lot of his music to really do this lesson justice. But I discovered that his guitar playing is actually a lot like my own. And I don't mean that in an arrogant, I'm just as good as Mark Knopfler way. I mean, he has a lot of the same tendencies that I've picked up from other guitar players, which leads me to believe that he has some of the same sort of preconceived notions when it comes to guitar playing. I think a lot of guitar players, whether or not we've met each other before, have this kind of kindred spirit and connection to each other based on how we learned to play the guitar and what things are easier on the guitar to do than others and how that affects our playing and what kind of musician we turn into. So I found a lot of that sort of connection with Mark Knopfler and it was really exciting for me because I feel really good about this lesson. If you've never seen one of my Habits of videos, I've done guitar players like John Mayer, Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, pretty much what I go for is trying to deconstruct exactly what it is that makes these guitar players play the way they do. I don't always go for showing you exact licks and trying to nail that tone that they have because that's their own thing. What I want to do is show you what they do in order to achieve their sound and then hopefully you can apply it to your own guitar playing and pick and choose your favorite parts of these awesome guitar players' arsenals of skills and use it to find your own voice as a musician. So that's really what we're going for here. I give you the tools and hopefully you can build something of your own. With that said, here's a guitar pick. You're not gonna need that. Mark Knopfler is all about fingers. Here's just a little example of something Mark might play. Mark Knopfler was a master of using his fingers as picks and really plucking the strings sometimes to achieve that. So, with his guitar playing, you're really going to want to work on using your fingers, primarily your thumb and index finger, and a little bit of the other three digits sprinkled in there. We'll get to those later on, but the first thing I want you to practice, remember we're not necessarily going for exact Mark Knopfler licks, although I will show you the Mark Knopfler sweet picking lick in Dire Straits, Sultans of Swing. I know it's not sweet picking, but you'll see what I mean. Anyways, here is how I would apply this technique to your own guitar playing so you can use it to find your own licks. I would just keep it simple. I would first start with just a descending shape, whatever scale you want. We'll just stick with the pentatonic for now and A. And then you can start making variations on that. Maybe something like this. Maybe going back up. Really, whatever you want. We can also just throw in some sort of kind of tongue twister. You can really come up with a lot of different ways, but the point is to execute on that two finger alternate picking technique because that is really going to give you that Mark Knopfler dynamic that is so crucial to nailing his vibe. It's not necessarily that he's playing the most complicated things, it's all about the feel and that is what really guitar playing is all about when you can hear a note and be like, that's that guy, you know what I mean? So I think that is a really great way to apply Mark Knopfler's vibe to your guitar playing is working on exercises that involve those two fingers to, you know, exercises you may already practice. Just throw away the pick like I mentioned and go with that little pincer grip. And the interesting thing about this finger technique is how it affected distorted tones. So the way it kind of makes everything sound a little bit rounder and more saturated, I think is extremely interesting because he would often use pretty high gain sounds, especially when you're talking about finger plucking and finger picking. It's not necessarily two uh, effects that would go hand in hand, but 
Let me tell you, they do. So here's my take of Money for Nothing. He plays it a little bit different, but I'm just gonna, again, this is about not necessarily the actual licks of Mark Knopfler, but the style. So he would do something like this. <laughs> So essentially what's going on here, again, we have little bits and pieces, not even triads this time, actually uh, little just kind of fourths happening. And that kind of led me to tie a bow on that little style of marks he would really give the chords a little extra care so instead of just playing uh, say a G position triad root position that is like that he would give it a little a little massage and that would again it's all about the fingers he wouldn't be like strumming the chord like this he would actually be taking care of it with multiple fingers each note to give him that ability to not only play the chord but also pluck some given note. And there was a cool little thing that Mark would do occasionally. It's kind of like a, a raking technique. So if you had a pick, you know how you kind of rake against a few muted strings before you get to that string you actually want to hit, like a real Stevie Ray Vaughan type thing. He would do the same sort of thing, but especially on a clean sound, it would just give this kind of like Spanishy, like flamenco sound almost, and again, contribute to that pop that he had with his finger tone. So an example of that would be, instead of just playing a note like this, he could do, and we'll actually pull that in close here for you so you can see, check out my thumb. So it's the exact same uh, technique of raking with a pick, but it's just with the thumb. And another iteration of that same exact technique would be where he would execute the rake, but then pluck with that index finger. So it would kind of be a little bit easier, I think, to convey his emotion on the guitar. So same note. And it's really dependent on this fretting finger kind of just taking care of the notes up above and raking those muted notes and then this is the fretted note that your index finger is plucking. And he would do that anywhere. And that would become sort of a staple kind of way he would deliver solos. All right, now, like I mentioned, I don't normally show licks, uh, exact licks of these guitar players in these habits videos, but I gotta show you the Mark Knopfler sweet picking lick. I call it sweet picking, it's not really sweet picking, it's his version of sweet picking that I am calling it the end of the Dire Straits Sultans of Swing guitar solo. We all know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> So the mechanics of this Knopfler sweep picking are actually very simple. The trick is finding the groove and finding the pocket. So with the right hand, all we're doing is that is the motion here. And I call it Knopfler sweep picking because it kind of is his version of sweep picking. And it just reminds me of that same vibe. So real simple here. You're Second finger here, or your index finger I should say, is actually going to have a tendency to go faster and be outside of that. It's like a dotted eighth note with a sixteenth note. That would be the rhythm if you wanted to notate it, but it's like... Really slowly.
So that is what's going on right there. Now let's swing over to the fretting hand. This is where a little bit of the magic is happening, I would say. So again, I never really teach exact licks in these habits videos, but this one seems like a good one to just have in the bag of tricks, right? If you wanna impress your buddies. So we have just a bar on the 10th fret and it is the same pattern for each little position. So here is the pattern. So it's pluck, pluck, hammer, pull, pluck on the B string. So that is what you want to get up to speed. And then it's just a matter of switching that position, moving your middle finger up to the 11th fret of the B string and keeping that bar just is ergonomically easier that way. And then we're gonna move this position up a whole step. And repeat. And that is the legendary Mark Knopfler, Sultans of Swing Sweet Picking with his fingers. The next thing we're gonna talk about is Mark Knopfler's approach to writing music and, and composing his licks. And this is why I love doing these Habits of videos because you find so many similarities among all these amazing guitar players. and. Maybe it becomes a sort of blueprint to being an iconic guitar player, if that's your goal. He was all about triads. And I may sound like a broken record if you've been watching my videos for a long time, but hey, the facts are the facts. Triads were literally 98.8% of Mark Knopfler's guitar playing and his thought, his mindset when he was improvising and constructing chords even, it was all about the triads. If you've never heard about triads or you wanna learn more about them, check out my course, Guitar Super System, link down in the description and you'll learn all about them. But just as an overview and an example, a real world example, we can look at a couple things that Mark Knopfler plays and I'll show you how they translate to the world of triads. So just for sticking to Sultans of Swing, the chord progression goes D minor, C, B flat, and then goes to A and then A7. And we'll just stick to that for now. Your traditional bar chords would look like this. So to put that into triad form and show you how he's thinking about it, this is a D minor triad in second inversion. So here would be reposition. Here's first inversion. And back up here to the second inversion. So he's got this going on. And then inst instead of playing this full bar chord, which sounds fine, but he is more of a sparse rhythm guitar player. Uh, just kind of complementing the band around him. He knows that the bass is already handling that low end, so he just has this little second inversion C major triad. Again, here's the reposition, first inversion. And then right down to the B flat, second inversion. Again. And then. So really interesting, really great attention to detail when it comes to the band. Great musicians always play well with other musicians, and that's what Mark did. So here's a really interesting point to kind of continue this chord progression and demonstrate further his attention to detail. What would happen in the kind of turnaround where it's like, we would have something like this. So what's happening here is he is not only delivering those triads in a sort of fashion that is grooving, that's that Mark Knopfler groove, he's always got, he kind of reminds me of like John Mayer, uh, I guess I should say that the other way around since Mark came first, but it's that pulsing groove that is really apparent among literally every guitar player that I do these habits videos for, innate awesome rhythm. So with that happening, just real simple. Triads, back to this triad. And then instead of playing the C, he's gonna move up to a root position here. 
but he's also got this. A, it's technically an A minor first inversion triad. So he's kind of got some, not modulation, but it's just a little extra rub on what's going on with the chords and the bass in particular. So it's just a cool little suspension, again, all based on triads. So again, we'll go through this. D minor, C, B flat, back to D minor, C, and then A minor to C root position. When we get to the kind of improvising parts of Mark Knopfler's guitar playing, we are still in the world of triads. So the way he works between his blues licks he would use triad arpeggios to kind of get from one part of the neck to the next. So that's derived from C major. That right there. C major triad, and then just an octave of that. So as you could hear, that would work really well over that type of thing. And what's going on after the fact, once you have that kind of understanding of the fretboard, then you can implement the pluckiness of Mark's finger style, and that's really when things start to come together regarding his technique and his mindset of the guitar. And the interesting thing about this chord progression is you can transpose it to other triads. So instead of something like this, we could have, or, and this is really only on one string set. So the possibilities are endless and that would be something that Mark might try. Always being conscious of what's happening around him and sort of catering to that situation. So learning your triads, I would recommend just major and minor if you're just starting out. fusion if you want to but the point is you can really go far out with just a little bit of information and what's more important I think than music theory is developing your feel and I think Mark Knopfler's feel is among the greatest guitar players ever and those of you who've been following my channel for a while I did a video one time where I ranked a bunch of guitar players one out of ten and it was a complete and utter joke like I actually put a disclaimer in front of the video that was like my opinion doesn't matter this is a stupid video idea but I think it will be entertaining so I did it and I gave Mark Knopfler a 6 out of 10 and that outraged everybody I'm ignorant I'm gonna give him a 6 out of 10 that's basically what I said but obviously as you can tell I am a huge admirer of his guitar playing so don't hold that against me anyways that is going to wrap up our habits of Mark Knopfler lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful in kind of understanding what makes him so great. Again, if you're interested in any of the music theory stuff like triads that I went over, check out Guitar Super System. It's linked right down in the description. And until next time, keep shredding.